guys, welcome to the Uncreative Crafter. My name is Jen, I am your host. Today is Sunday, July 26th. Um, it is a cloudy day here in New Hampshire, and thus the really god-awful lighting. Um, if you are new to my podcast, welcome. Thank you so much for checking me out, I really appreciate it. If you're a returning viewer, woohoo, thanks for coming back, and um watching more of what I've got. If you are new, um, this is primarily a fiber-related video podcast. So I talk about knitting, spinning, um, weaving, crochet, etc. with the occasional different craft thrown in when I'm not lazy. Um, quick note on um, subscribers, by the way, I'm up to 80, which is just mind-boggling. It's amazing. It's wonderful. And I know a lot of that is because really awesome people have been telling you about me and you are checking me out, which is just, uh, I can't even, there are, there are no words. So, um, I will be doing a giveaway at a hundred. I know I have a while to go. I tend to gain my subscribers slowly, but they tend to stick around, which is, I'm not complaining about that. I will be holding a giveaway at a hundred subscribers. Uh, which may take a little while, and that's totally fine. It'll probably be yarn. I haven't figured it out yet. I figure I've got a few months down the road to um, <laughs> for that to happen. But if you like what you see and you're not a subscriber on YouTube, please consider subscribing. And um, if you already are a subscriber and you think that a friend might enjoy, please feel free to pass me along. I don't normally like to ask people to subscribe. I figure if you like what you see, you'll do what you want. You're probably a grown-up. Um, but since there's going to be a giveaway at 100, it doesn't hurt to ask. Um, also, if you've heard about my podcast from someone, please let me know who that is. You, it can be a, an email or a comment or, you know, something um, via private message on Ravelry. Just because I am super behind on podcasts and um, I don't always, I'm not always current. A lot of times I'll be editing the current episode, catching up on old episodes of podcasts that I watch and someone will have mentioned me, and if I had just been caught up, I would have known to say thank you to them on the current episode. So please let me know how you heard about me, because I would like to thank the people who are spreading the word about the Uncreative Crafter. All right, shameless plug aside, ah, ba 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 ba, busy a uh, couple of weeks with not a lot done. So let's jump on right into it. Um. Okay, let's do stash. There is some stash. Uh, my husband and I went to Burlington, Vermont yesterday, uh, and I will talk a little bit more about this in the On the Edge segment at the end where I go into random stuff in my life that's not craft-related. But um, we went up to Burlington, Vermont for an event, and um, one of the gals that I met in one of the VKNs uh, is from that area and very kindly gave me a heads up on parking for the event and also places to check out while I was there, including um, the yarn shop, yarn slash fabric shop, um, Nido? Nido. I didn't actually ask how to pronounce it, so my bad. Nido. N-I-D-O. And uh, <laughs> other than getting lost trying to find it, which is silly because it's super easy to find, I'm just really bad with directions. Um, cute little shop. Not a ton of yarn, but some really beautiful yarn. Um, Madeline Tosh was there, and it was very difficult for me to not get any Madeline Tosh. But I bought Madeline Tosh recently, and I haven't used it, and now I know where to get some more if I want to drive, you know, a good two hours to get it. Or order it. She'd probably send it to me. Um, and what I was really looking for um, that the gal tipped me off to was Quince & Company. Quince & Co. Quince & Company. I should probably look this stuff up before I start podcasting. Um, and so I'd never used it, and I'm always on the lookout to try new yarns that I haven't used before. And so, um, yeah, she had a beautiful assortment of the different yarns that they carry or make. Um, and had some difficulty sort of narrowing it down. I always love, you know, messing with wool, and I'm looking at this beautiful gray one, thinking, oh, maybe I'll make a hat. But I just made a worsted weight sort of light purple hat, and is that too similar to what a gray hat would be? I don't know. 
Um, so I ended up picking up, um, and it really helped that she had a shop sample of this yarn. I ended up picking up three skeins of the Piper, which is this 50% um, merino, 50% mohair yarn. Yes, super fine Texas merino and super kid Texas mohair. And I ended up getting three of these because I figured better safe than sorry. I would rather have too much of it and not enough. Anyway, you want to see the yarn. So this is it. This is actually relatively true to color, which is kind of awesome. I'm always having trouble getting the colors right on my podcast. Smile. And um, this is a lace weight. And I've never, I don't think I've really worked with a wool mohair before. I've worked with a, a blend from like Lion Brand or something, Moonlight Mohair. Um, but this is super duper soft. Little bit of a scritchy factor. That's the mohair, but I'm pretty sure that I will live. Um, and so three skeins is going to be 915 yards, and I'm sure I can find something to do with it. I'd love to knit um, probably a really big, light, airy shawl um, on bigger needles than I need. And I'm thinking, even though I've done this before, there are a couple of um, patterns that I've used just where you use up, you, you increase, so you start small, and you increase, 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 until you hit half your yarn, you have to weigh it, and then you decrease, 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 and so it's a triangle. And I know I do a lot of triangle shawls, but um, I just really like the concept of using up as much of this as possible. So these three squishy, gorgeous skeins in the color, because uh, you probably won't know that, in the color Odessa, which is this beautiful, like, purple, lavender, mauvey colorway came to live with me. So that was, um, I was glad to support local, <laughs> at least, um, her local, not my local. Probably won't get a chance to go back there for a while. So that's it for Stash, my, um, Mad Color Geek Tour, Mad Color Fiber Arts Geek Tour. The lady who does Mad Color, I signed up for her Geek Tour for Doctor Who colorways, and she did say in her stuff that it would ship by the 25th of the month, and I've been impatiently waiting, and yes, it's the 26th, but I was really hoping it would be in the mail yesterday, and it wasn't, so that'll be a stash on the next episode, assuming I can hold off on um, putting that on Instagram, I'm going to behave, I'm going to try really hard to behave, and um, yeah, so that's it for stash. I do have one finished object, and um, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, by the way, you can find me on most social media as Storm Coast. You can find the Ravelry group for the podcast as the Uncreative Crafter Podcast Fans. Yep. So if you watch me on Instagram, I'm pretty bad. I usually share what I'm going to talk about on the podcast way before I actually record, so you kind of know what to expect. Spoilers. Um, I did, last episode, rip back on my scrappy pink socks. I was um, working on the heel, and I messed up, and I lost two stitches somehow, and it's a short row heel, and I didn't put a lifeline in, so I needed to rip back, but I didn't want to because I didn't have a lifeline. Well, I did rip back. I had to fudge it a little bit, um, and I, you know, finally sat down and did that. So I did finish both of my socks, and um, I forget whose podcast I saw this on, but the really brilliant idea that I wish I had thought of sooner, it must have been two tangled skeins, I think, um, or maybe the Canadian knitter, or probably both of them, um, putting in a stitch marker <laughs> so you guys know how much progress I've made, um, if it's a long-term project, if it's not something that I finish in between recording. And so um, I did have the lifeline in here, and then I used it on the second sock. But anyway, um, this sort of shows you where I had been on the last episode. Oh yeah, blowing out the colors. Doesn't matter how dark it is outside. So I had been here. I ripped all the way back to the heel, re-knit the heel, knit a little bit of leg, and a cuff. So sock number one is done. Need to weave in the ends. Yeah, I'm lazy. And sock number two is complete. So, yeah. And the really great thing is, um, I'm not sure I, I'm, a, I'm in love with the fit. I'm still trying to learn the best stitch count for my foot size and the heel I like. Um, so I've been doing a lot of short row heels, trying those out. Um, and I don't love the fit of the cuff. It's a little loose. I mean, it's a little shorty sock. It doesn't go very high up, but, um, maybe next time I'll knit the cuffs on 
zero zeros, double zeros. Um, I do knit the short row heel on double zeros, which is a pain, but it gives me a slightly closer cuff, which is, is good because I don't want to wear these out. Um, I did weigh these. These were about 52 grams. I am using a 70 stitch count because I've got a wider foot and the 64 stitches um, that I've been doing just feel a little stretched out and not as comfy. Uh, the toe box is a little bit wide, um, so maybe I'll play around with how fat I make the toe, but um, there's enough, uh, actually, because my friend Angie, uh, Angelique Artistry on Ravelry, also bought this yarn. I sent her to my old local yarn store when she was going to be in the area, and she bought some for a project, and she had some left over, so I finished um, this sock with my old skein. And I got up to about here. I can see my Russian join. It's a little pop right there. You can kind of tell where the yarn is double thickness. And I got all the way up to here. Had to join the new skein. You can't really tell in my opinion. Um, but I have enough. I have about 57 grams. So I can actually get three pairs of socks out of two skeins of sock yarn, which is really cool. Um, two pairs of shorty socks and a pair of more normal height um, socks that... Anyway, look at how much yarn there is left. Yeah, tons of yarn. So I'll get another pair of shorty socks out of there. And I did finish my goal. This is probably like four episodes ago, but I said I was going to knit, try to knit two pairs of shorty leftover socks for every, like, one pair of breaking into new sock yarn that I did. And um, technically my alpaca socks were shorty socks. <sighs> we're not talking about those. I have not um, felted the other one. My husband accidentally felted one of my classic Elite Aaron's Alpaca Sock Socks, and if you watched last episode, you got to see all the stash that I got because he did that. Um, have not been able to bring myself to felt the other one intentionally. But one of my coworkers' daughters, um, and she knits, so she understands, you know, A, how traumatizing this is, but B, also how important it is to me that this goes to a good home. Um, it fits her foot perfectly. So now I just have to make my husband felt it and do the exact same thing that he did. Uh, but anyway... That makes two <laughs> pairs of shorty socks. So I get to try uh, a new sock yarn or break open a new skein. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. It was a long day yesterday. Uh, weekends have become just long, tiring things. And then I record and I sound kind of like a nut and really scatterbrained. I have show notes. I promise. I'm like this in real life, though. Let's be honest. Um, in progress. My drop stitch scarf, which uh, is being knit out of Arucania Renko, which is the um, Ruka. No, I don't remember. Arucania Ruka, I think. It's the sugar cane yarn. I'll fix it um, in the show notes, which I may even eventually put up. <laughs> Whichever one the sugar cane yarn is. Um, I did leave that one at work. Um, I'll be honest, it wasn't getting a lot of love. Once I got the mojo going on the scrappy pink socks again, that kind of became my main project. So that has sort of fallen on the back burner. I am still working on it at work, um, but it tends to be something that I can really only work on in longer spans of times, like my lunch break, because I like to get a whole four row repeat done at once. That takes me, you know, not enough time for my breaks, but enough time for a maybe one or two on lunch, depending on uh, how quickly I eat. So that is something I'm working on. Slow going, though, so I'll be honest with you. Um, another project that I picked up that you guys haven't seen in a little while is my sock yarn um, patchwork blanket. Uh, a lot of people are doing this, and um, it's called, like, the Cozy Memories blanket. I'm using a knitted patchwork recipe, which I will um, figure out the actual name of that pattern and put it in the show notes. I've linked to it before, um, and my swap partner, well, not really swap partner, we just sort of agreed to do a swap, just the two of us, um, and, um, I talked about this on the last episode, all the beautiful yarn that she sent me, I finally dug out, um, I've been having some problems, I'm trying to use up scraps of yarn first, like, so if I knit a sock head hat and I have you know, 40 odd grams of yarn, I'm going to look for a project I can do with that 40 grams as opposed to making a mini and then only having 36 or 37 grams of yarn. I'm going to try and use up the most of it and then make my minis out of it. So I've been a little, it's been a little bit more difficult trying to find um, scraps that I already have 
to knit out of, and I decided that her yarns were so pretty that I didn't want them to be on the edge of the blanket because I feel like the edge of the blanket is what's going to get the most wear and tear, maybe. So I did make myself um, out a square out of um, one of the squares that I actually sent her that I hadn't used in my blanket, and this was the, I think, Lion Brand Magic Stripes that they don't make anymore. But um, I decided to add a square on my blanket so it could be an edge square, and then I could start using some of her really pretty yarn. And if you follow me on Instagram, you've seen pictures of this too. Uh, and actually, I'm a really big nerd. I have started a an Excel sheet. <laughs> I mean, my husband um, messed with it a little bit so it, it fit my needs a bit better. But basically, every time I add a square, I'm color coding it approximately. Obviously, some of these I can't get anywhere close and it's not worth the time to try and color match, but um, color coding squares and then um, putting in the name of the yarn in the colorway and if I got it from someone and I remember who I got it from. So that way um, I will have sort of a map of my blanket. Anyway, you want to see the blanket, which is slightly bigger than it was last time you saw it. And so I have added three squares and we've got the Lion Brand Magic Stripes square and then this is the... Um, Desert Vista Dye Works in Opals, which has got a little bit of a shimmer. I don't know if you can see that. Maybe not. Yeah, probably not. But like, ah, oh, she sent me such big skeins too. I was like, oh, can you just send me three gram skeins? Because that's all I really need. And so far I have, like, there was a whole another um, gray section on the Desert Vista Dye Works. And then there's a little bit of blue. And I didn't get to the blue. <laughs> so I think somebody cheated. I didn't actually weigh my skeins, but I think somebody cheated. And then she had signed up for um, a Gnome Acres mini skein swap, uh, and she ended up getting a couple of um, extras, like uh, duplicates that... I don't remember how she got these, but whatever. Uh, and so this is Gnome Acres in, I don't know the base, but the colorway, I'm pretty sure this one is Thor. So, and I can totally see that. So I'm just kind of doing this random picking method where I put them behind my back and I make my husband pick a hand left or right and we do a sudden death match and so I'm not going to try and obsessively match the colors up just by the time the whole blanket's done whatever it's going to be figured out so I you know I added a whole three squares which is great did um this in the car for the most part yesterday driving up to Burlington so it was fabulous and then um like I mentioned, I finished two pairs of scrappy socks. I got to start a new pair of socks. Um, I started this right before Andrea of the Cat Ladies VKN on Friday. I wanted to have, because um, I'm a bit project, like obviously I'm working on a lot of things at once. And if I would just sit down and work on one thing totally, I'd probably finish it a lot faster, but whatever. Um, and so I wanted to work on my socks on her VKN. Uh, and so I, um, was trying to find the yarn that I wanted to use, and I can't find it, <laughs> which is not good. I know I didn't give it away or sell it to anybody. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Crime in Mayberry. I live in a really tiny town in New Hampshire, and so it's kind of a big deal when you hear the police sirens. Someone's in trouble. Um, where were we? Um, oh yeah, trying to find my yarn, and could not find it, found a couple of skeins that also fit the bill. I'm trying to use up older stash, too. I keep buying this beautiful, gorgeous stash, you know, <coughs> Felici, <coughs> and um, just not using it. And then I buy more stuff, and I tend to crack into the newer stuff when I've got perfectly lovely older stuff. Um, and so I was kind of trying to decide between the... God, I don't even remember... What it was, I was either Red Heart or Lion Brand sock yarn, that bubblegummy pink that I showed you a few episodes ago, um, or some Knit Picks Stroll, which I think you actually saw on the first podcast, which means I've had it since December. Um, and I decided because I had just finished a pair of pink socks that I wanted to try um, solid color socks. And I thought that I'd never made solid color socks before, but that's a lie because I made my red socks out of my Cascade 220 Superwash. So, duh. Anyway, long-winded story later, um, <laughs> I started a sock, 
And this is just another super bright colorway. Um, this is called um, Vibrant Violet. Kind of poofed out and got fat after I took it out of the wrapper. And so I um, I cast on, and I, yeah, all right, I cast on. So I had it started for the VKN, and then on the actual VKN, I did all of the toe increases. I'm lazy, and I do not like doing make one left and make one right. Very difficult for me, especially on super tiny needles, because I have to knit my socks on zeros. And so I just do uh, knit to the front and the back. And then I put my lifeline in after VKN because I've learned my lesson with lifelines. And uh, all of this up from the lifeline is either in the car yesterday or at the baseball game. Oops, spoiler, who <laughs> went to a baseball game? Um, so, you know, good progress. I'm about 20 rows in and normally my foot before I go to the heel is about 60 rows. So a good third of the sock is, uh, or the foot of the sock is done. I'm using my, um, my chow goose that I showed you last week, the size zero 60 inch um, cord. Uh, the Knit Picks, inter no, not interchangeables, the Knit Picks fixed circulars that I normally use to Magic Loop um, had the pink socks on them. Up until I started the VKN, like I finished binding off maybe like 10 minutes before the VKN started, and I wanted to have this sock cast on before. Also, I wanted to try my new needles. Um, not totally loving these for magic looping. The cord is not as flexible, um, and I don't know if it's a different <sighs> material for the needles. These might be like stainless steel as opposed to aluminum. I don't know. I'm not totally loving it, but it was worth trying, you know, and I got a good deal on the needles, so. And I did look it up, and the internet says it's chow goo. Someone told me chai goo, um, which is just a weird concept to me because it's not spelled like chai, it's spelled like chia. But I looked it up and apparently it's chow goo. So, chow goo needles. So that is um, going to probably be one of my new work projects as I clink into my glass here. Let's just, let's just drop things. That's just the thing we're going to do. All right. So today is the last day of Tour de Fleece which started back on July 24th. No, July 4th. Oh, well, it didn't start two days ago. Man. And um, it has been a long journey, and um, you're supposed to wear yellow today if you feel victorious. Um, a, I forgot, and B, I own maybe one yellow shirt, and I think it's um, got paint on it because I used it as a painting shirt. Um, I do feel pretty victorious, and um, we'll show you what I've been working on for Tour de Fleece. I um, did finish, and you saw the singles last episode, the Contented Farms, Contented, Contented Butterfly Farm, Wee Beastie Bat, which is um, wool, mohair, and silk. I did finish plying those together. It's a little over-twisted still, um, trying to hang up and dry skeins of yarn with a kitten who likes the shower has not been terribly easy. Um, I've also heard that you shouldn't weigh your yarn down when you're drying it and so it's still got a little bit of extra twist in it but considering I'm you know it's my first skein of yarn spun on the supported spindle I think I did a pretty good job. So let me just untangle it from my socks here. And so I really think it came out very very well. Um, Plying definitely helped even it out. Uh, the colors are just really gorgeous. The muted gray, the pops of, you know, violet, and a um, little bit of white from the silk. And, uh, you know, it's, it's only an ounce. It's a little under 60 yards, I think, when I measured it after I plied it. I need to start measuring after I've washed it, because I understand you can lose some yardage when you wash it, but I'm terrible about measuring it. Anyway, it's probably something that's going to go into weaving when I ever pick that up again, which I will. I totally will when Ozzy is more grown up and more calm. But anyway, finished yarn. So I actually only finished one yarn during Tour de Fleece, but I'm okay with that um, because I feel like I learned a lot. I am still working on my fiber stash Polworth on my Contented Butterfly Farm drop spindle. Ooh. 
sock down. Um, you know, and I'm certainly getting there. I'm almost to the end of the first two ounces. I still think I'm going to try and get all four ounces on here. Um, but just sort of supported spindling kind of became my new favorite thing to do when I was spinning. And uh, this was sort of a work project, and then once the sock got started, I stopped bringing those to work. Um, but again, I'm really enjoying this. I know I love Polworth, and I, it's been an enjoyable project. I feel a lot more confident on the drop spindle. Um, having now used the Russian supported spindle to A, spin singles, and B, ply, I feel like I learned a lot about that as well. Um, I have started a new project on that, so let me grab my um, zip tie case <laughs> that it's hiding in. And I started some, and I apologize, my show notes are over there, I'm not avoiding eye contact. Um, Cozy Rabbit Farm, and this is a doozy. It's Merino, Silk, Tencel, Angelina, Firestar, and Angora. And I had two ounces of that. And um, I bought that back at Vermont Sheep and Wool, probably, I'd say probably 2013. But I'm not, yeah, it must have been 2013. And um, I sort of was up in the air about what I wanted to spin next, but having spun an ounce of the Contented Butterfly Farm bat, I thought maybe, you know, don't build yourself up too much too quickly and build, you know, only two, only two ounces instead of four ounces. And this stuff is just gorgeous, and I must have gotten the hang of supported spinning because I am spinning super fine. I'm getting better about not pulling the fibers apart and separating the different fibers. But um, let me show you real quick what the fiber looks like. I kind of split it up into these little, you know, fuzzy, pretty balls of fiber and see the different color variations. Just loving the green. The sparkle is very subtle, but it's there. I'm afraid I don't have percentages of the... Um, fiber content, but really enjoying doing supported spinning. I've actually been able to do it on some of the uh, VKNs, which has just been really lovely. And a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, what are you doing? So, And I, um, I have no idea the weight of this, but it seems super thin. I'll sort of pull a little bit out here. And so can you, can you see how thin that is? That's Really pretty thin, I think. Um, so I'm wondering if it's going to be a fingering or maybe even a lace weight. Which would be pretty cool. Because I've never been able to spin that thin on my wheel. So this is this is going to be a long-term project, though. Um, if you've ever supported uh, Spindled, you know that you don't do it for production. You do it because you can get super thin yarn. That is beautiful, but it takes a while. So, Tour de Fleece victory! Woo! I still have to spin today, but I got plenty of time. Um, I did not spin yesterday because we were so late getting back, and I really should have known better. I should have spun in the morning. I should have realized that um, we weren't going to get home till super late. By the time I got home, it was today. And I could have stayed up and, like, cheated, but I didn't actually take a rest day ever. I spun on the rest days. So I feel like maybe that was my rest day. So I'm not going to beat myself up over that. Um, otherwise, I spun every single day. I know my goal was, I think, originally 15 minutes a day. Some days I managed more, some days I managed less. Um, but the practice and the muscle memory was amazing. And I love doing tour de fleece. So sorry it's over. Um, and can't wait again until next year. See what I'm spinning then. So that was Tour de Fleece, uh, and then we'll do a little bit of On the Edge, and then I will let you guys get on with your day. Uh, War and Peace, I've made no progress. Um, thought I'd done at least 1%, but no, I'm still at 73%. I haven't gone to the gym at all this month, which is normally when I read it. And I've just been busy doing other things, so yeah, nothing to report there. Uh, as I mentioned, my husband and I went to Burlington yesterday. We ended up, he won tickets to the Lake Monsters game. They're a minor league baseball game, if you're not familiar with them. And, uh, yeah, we decided to make a day of it. We wandered around Church Street. Um, 
did a little bit of shopping. I went to the yarn store, got my Starbucks, because we don't have a Starbucks near where I live. Um, my husband tried Hetty Topper, which if you um, drink beer or, you know, craft beers at all, it's um, it's a small brewery in Vermont and um, the same town that Ben & Jerry's is in, actually. And uh, it, I think it's a double IPA, uh, which means it's very uh, hoppy and very, like, citrusy grapefruity. And I hate IPAs, and my husband loved this beer. Like, he was on a mission to buy the beer. You can't find the beer at all. Uh, you have to catch the update on the day. Like, they send it to the stores. Um, <laughs> but we found a restaurant in Burlington that was serving it in the can, and he adored it. And I thought it was the worst thing I had ever tasted, but I don't like IPAs. But he's had his heady topper, so that's good. Uh, it was Star Wars Day. <laughs> At the baseball game, which was cool. Uh, you've probably figured out I'm kind of a nerd. And um, I actually don't have any Star Wars stuff, though. Um, which I should probably change that. And uh, so it was really cute. You know, they had Chewbacca and they had a guy dressed up as Obi-Wan Kenobi. And all the kids, you know, could bring lightsabers and a lot of people dressed up and stuff. Um, I decided to... Um, wear my Star Trek insignia earrings... And, um, you know, their little communicator badges, the little, like, weird arrow thing. So I have some earrings like that. And then I decided to wear my uh, Doctor Who My Little Pony mashup shirt. Um, if you watch My Little Pony at all, uh, there's a character named Time Turner Pony or Doctor Who's. Uh, he's basically a time-traveling pony, in my opinion. Anyway, I have a shirt with him on it. He's holding a sonic screwdriver in his mouth, and it says, Trust me, I'm a doctor. And um, several people commented on my shirt, and one girl at the mall uh, actually pointed at me and said, can I give you a hug, because I love your shirt. Um, so that was, that was a thing that happened. That's Burlington for you. Why not? So I made somebody's day, which was cool. Um, <laughs> it was the Vermont Lake Monsters versus the Connecticut Tigers. Um, I didn't really have a vested interest in anybody, but I ended up rooting for Connecticut just because I'm from Connecticut. And of course, you know, that's tough. You're a visiting team and nobody likes you. <laughs> uh, they ended up winning five to four. So go Connecticut. I brought my knitting um, and I was able to get a little bit of knitting done. Um, thankfully, I didn't drop any stitches or gain any stitches. And as things got, you know, more exciting towards the end, because it took until, um, I think the ninth inning, uh, was when Connecticut finally got ahead by one. And, uh, so at that point, you know, I was watching pretty intently. And then there were fireworks, and, um, again, by the time we got out and got home, it was past midnight. So it was a long day, but it was a fun day. And I got, you know, some good car knitting done on the way there. And then last, uh... We've got Lazy Bum Dorian uh, sleeping on the couch there, and thankfully Ozzy is also behaving and being sleepy right now. Ozzy has been a right terror. Uh, we took Ozzy in to get neutered on Thursday. There was a low-cost spay and neuter clinic, and I brought him in and, you know, picked him up, and they, they told me the cost, and I said, Ozzy's a girl, because <laughs> it costs more money than I was anticipating. And so, yeah, Ozymandias is, is a little lady. Um, it turns out that even though most orange cats are boys, my husband and I are willing to ignore a, an awful lot of obvious signs, such as missing um, body parts. <laughs> and, um, you know, we're like, oh, what a small little kitty you are. Well, if you were a boy, you probably would be a little bit bigger by now. So Ozzy's a girl. Ozzy's an unusual girl. Uh, something between, like, 20 to 25 percent of orange cats uh, are girls. She's got a little bit of the white on her paws. Um, trying to transition and start calling her her has been a bit difficult. She was a boy to us for the first, you know, month and a half that we had her. But, um, yeah, she's still a nut. She, she was spayed. Um, big surgery. She was out of it for most of the night. And then started running around and being her usual self. She's actually been naughtier than her usual self, and I had to leave the VKN on Friday night because she was just being so naughty. 
So, it's going to stay Ozymandias. We thought about renaming her to something um, a little bit more girly. We were thinking Oswin um, or Osgood from Doctor Who. I had suggested Ozma from uh, The Wizard of Oz. And we decided that since we don't really ever call her Ozymandias anyway, she just, we call her Ozzy. We're going to stick with Ozymandias. That's what, uh, what's on her rabies shot paperwork and her spaying paperwork. And uh, hey, why not? Ozymandias can be a girl's name too. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to start calling her Lady Oz or Lady Ozymandias. So she's a lady. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, I guess I will let you guys get on with your day. And um, maybe if I do this early enough, A, it'll upload, because last video took three stinking days to upload to YouTube, and B, maybe I'll actually get the show notes up before it's time to record the next episode. Alright guys, I will see you in another two weeks, and remember, it gets done one stitch at a time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.